ये वगैरह का ये ना आदे नेत्र मन का ताकरा ने कहा है ना आदे नेत्र एक किन्ह एक ना मिसेज डाल दिया ना है ना क्या कैलेंडर का पहले दिन ये टा पेन वाला है मटे मेकर वाला है मेकर साइज़ से का वैडी करांडे बे जॉइन नहीं ना वादे खट्टी है खबरोरी बदम तभी नाड़ी तो ना क्या के बालमु इधर बसे पड़ा हम लोगों की क्या लती है ना वाने हम लोग में आते क्या लता के तीव्र बना बढ़ा ले इसी अरे काटिए खता करने दे मैं माँगना आधा हितू है स्केटर प्लॉट टेके मैं कैलेक को मत यूज़ करने का है आये दांत रात बसे वाले मगे गुड़ा कट्टे हुआ रा वेक्टर प्रोजेक्शन ने क्या ना बोलता का है कि अंडे के लमे देखे तो मैं वैडिंग मटे भी लती बे मैं कहने तो मुनाद आहन नहीं मैं मांग फॉर्म में एम लोगों का ना रिप्लाई कर लेती मांग ही तो टू आवर्स वाके कर्म के लाये मांग ना दरना सिविल का टीयर था अनिदा वाके बिल्डिंग एक्साम थी ना बिल्डिंग तक का समारोह का टीयर लो थी ना इन्द टू आवर्स वाके कर्म थी ना चिला तो मैं मांग प्लान करे कटिया का ताकरण को ताऊ पड़ी ताऊ बिना देती ना
මොකුත් ප්‍රශ්නයක් නැද්ද මා RLC එක චුට්ටක් කියලා දෙන්න පුළුවන් අර දෙක කරලා ඉවර වුණාට පස්සේ RLC එක ඕකේ එහෙම කියන්නේ දැන් RLC කියන්නේ RLC එකෙන් අර කොහොම ඩිෆරෙන්ෂල් ඊක්වේෂන් එක වෙනකන් ප්‍රශ්නයක් නැහැ ඒක සරල ඔප්පු ඔප්පු කරන්න එක විතරයි නේද කියන්නේ මම හිතන්නේ ප්‍රශ්න ඇති ඩිෆරෙන්ෂල් ඊක්වේෂන් එක සුළු කරන්න එක කොහොමද කියන්නේ ඒක ඒක එක ගානක් හදලා පෙන්වනවා 2000 ගිය අවුරුද්ද 2016 17 ආහ ආහ හරි මම හදලා පෙන්වන්න නම් මේ මයි කට්ටිය මං ගාව මේ මවුස් එකෙන් තමයි මම ලියන්නේ ඉන්න අකුරු පොඩ්ඩක් සමහර වෙලාවට පැහැදිලි නැති වෙති ඒකට මම සොලියුෂන් එකක් මේ හදලා තියෙනවා තාම ඒක අතට හම්බ වුණේ නැහැ ඒ ඉන්න මේ ඒක පුළුවන් තරම් හදමු හරිද RLC එකෙන් නම් ගොඩාක් දුරට ප්‍රශ්න වෙන්නේ පටිකියුලර් ඉන්ට්‍රිගල් වෝ එනකොට D ඔපරේටර් මතකයි නම් වැඩ ලේසි ඉක්මනින් කරගන්න පුළුවන් डी ऑपरेटर रेकटा माँग नोट टेका शेयर करना माँगे एफबी पेज जेकटा हरी न तं चैनल लेके हरी कोमरी माँग लिंक टेका डान ना वो तो उटे नोट टेका वगैरह टेका अंडा पुलवांग वे डी ऑपरेटर रेका बाला ना माँग वेला वाती बहुत एका पोड़ा किया ना इधर इधर माँग क्यों वाने वो मिला स्तुना कर गयी ना अगला डी ऑपर मैट्रिका तं right uh, so we will start okay uh, i think uh, all of you will be having last year paper 2017 18 uh, 4 max paper anyone who doesn't have the paper with you all now because i can't share the screen for both the things if i share the calculator i can't share the paper so if you have the paper with you all it's better anyone who don't have the paper so i can just uh, put the pdf to the chat so you can download if anyone don't have it yes sushantini you have raised your hand what is the matter sushantini no response so i assume that you all are having the paper with you uh, so please uh, take uh, question number 3 the question for the scatter plot right okay we will see the catch of slow question also right so in question number 3 right uh, choosing the independent and dependent variable uh, is not a big issue right so it's it's easy you can choose it right uh, the first question is to identify that so obviously when you read the question properly you can identify what is the dependent and independent variable because in this particular question there is a term which specifically says depends on right so if you see the third line the study was conducted to identify the updating of ozone levels in california's south coast air basin for years 1981 to 1991 it believes that 
the number of days that the ozone levels exceed 0.2 ppm depends on. So they have specifically given the term. So it's easy for us to identify what is the X variable and what is the Y variable. So easily you can say seasonal meteorological index, that is your uh, uh, in independent variable, that is your X, right? And uh, the number of days will be your Y variable, right? Uh, so I'm, I'm going to mute everyone. So if you all want to speak up, just unmute yourself and speak up, right? Uh, so those are the X variables and Y variables. So after identifying the X variables and Y variables, right, we'll move on to the next one. The, uh, the next part is construct the scatter plot for this data and identify the relationship type. So constructing the scatter, scatter plot is uh, very easy. Just drawing a graph, like an O-level uh, linear graph, you have to just take a graph sheet. If it is a graph sheet, it's better. Uh, just take a graph sheet and uh, uh, draw the X, Y axis and uh, choose a scale, proper scale, and uh, draw it, right? Just um, marking the coordinates, that's all, right? So, there are two types of relationship, either positive relationship or negative relationship. So the positive negative thing is something like that. Now, uh, when you see the number of days and the index, right? If the index increases and as index increase, if the number of days also increase, that is a positive relationship, right? If the number of days in, uh, decreases, number of days is decreases, when index increase, it is a negative relationship. If there is a same variation, one increases, other also increases, so positive. So when one increases and if the other one decreases, it is negative, that's all, right? So to say that it is how much positive you have to find the Pearson's coloration coefficient. So that's the R squared value. Right, so that is the part where our calculation starts. Right, in the part C, they are asking us to confirm the relationship type by coloration coefficient value. Right, so here is the point where the calculation starts and where we are going to use the calculator. Right, so if you take to page number six in that, uh, sorry, page number seven in that same paper. Right, I'll just share that paper so you can easily see that. Uh, yeah. Right. Can you all see the paper? Uh, what do you mean by not clear? Is, uh, is my speaking is not clear or the screen is not clear? What is not clear? Now, okay, okay, if it is fine, then okay. Right, so you can see, this is the coloration coefficient value. This is the equation, right? So just when you're going to do the calculation, see what are the terms that you need, right? So one is X bar, another one is Y bar. These are the additional two terms you need to calculate. So what is X bar? X bar is the average of X values. Other one, Y bar is the average of Y values, right? Those are simple things. How, how are you going to find the X bar value and Y bar value? So if you go back to the table, right? Is my sound is okay now? Due to some reason, I got disconnected. Is it okay? Is everyone available? Yeah, sound is not clear. Still, is it? No, it is not clear.
how about now uh, is the sound is clear just uh, anyone just give me a reply yeah right so if you if you go back to the table yeah okay fine thank you uh, now if you see there are 11 values right there are certain values for days and certain values for uh, indexes so there are 11 values just add up all the values and find uh, what is the average value so that's all just add up all everything and divide by 11 right simple as that so finding average is not a big task right when it comes to finding the correlation coefficient r the equation seems big but the calculation is small right so we are going to extend this chart there are the major things we need here is x variable and y variable other than that we need some other variable so we are going to expand the chart right so i'll show how we are going to expand the chart right so I, uh, Right. So, right. Give me a minute. Right. Can you see the whiteboard? Okay. So, uh, I'm going to just you uh, mean for some reason it's not writing. Yeah, is there given the old question with question paper we have to memorize? Mostly the equations are given, so you no need to memorize the equation. Right, so we'll draw a chart, right? All right, I'm getting some messages. Sorry for the delay, that's why I'm just pausing in the middle, right? So why my first column is my X variable. My second column will be by y variable so we know the values right there are around seven values right? i'm just going to take around two values right not all the 11 values right from the x variable our index index is the x variable so the first variable is 18.7 and the y variable respective to that is 91 and the uh, uh, next variable is 17.8 and the y variable respective to that is 75. So how we are going to find x bar? So x bar, x bar is a fair simple calculation. X bar is you have to add up these two values. That is you have to add 18.7, 18.7 17.8 right, by two. Similarly, you have to find uh, the y bar. So X bar and Y bar calculations are not that difficult, right? So if you see the Pearson coefficient formula, right? So the formula has few terms, right? So the first term is, uh, so it is in a fraction format. I'll write it down here, bear with my writing, huh? okay? So it is in a uh, fraction, so Sigma, uh, x minus x bar so what does x i means x i means x changes from 1 to 11 so all the 11 values should be substituted there and you have to find the individual values and add up those all 
all the individual values. That is the meaning of the sigma, right? Into here, y i minus y bar. So the bracket closes. Here square root of sigma x i minus x bar whole thing squared here y i minus y bar whole thing squared here this is a separate sigma here right so in the chart you will you will have to insert a column separate column for x i minus x bar whole thing uh, for a bracket sorry and into y i minus y bar uh, column for this one to find out this this portion right i'll just uh, show the columns and we'll move on to the calculator later right to find uh, the next column would be for this one so this is the next column that is x i minus x bar whole thing squared right. so the next one next column would be for y i minus y bar whole thing squared so these are the columns so you need only three more columns uh, right so these are the things you have to fill up right so i'm going to move to my calculator screen so if you have the uh, calculator with you you can use that one right uh, give me a second right can you all see the calculator I'm assuming that you can see the calculator, right? Right. Uh, for, first of all, here the only different thing is usually we will be typing some uh, mathematical operation and we will be pressing equal and we will find out uh, what is that value, right? Here, it's not the case, right? So we are going to use this cal calc button, which is right below shift, C-A-L-C button. So that will be used here. Uh, go to moon. First of all, keep the cal calculator in computer mode, just in computations. That is, you press mode, right? And select one, that is COMP, select one, right? So just keep it in that mode, right? So I'm going to calculate the first portion, that is XI minus X bar into YI minus Y bar, right? So just open a bracket. So I need the term X, right? To insert X, you, we know we have to press alpha, press alpha and the closing bracket mark. You can see you can see above that closing bracket button. There will be a small X in red color, right? Okay, everyone fine with that? So minus, just I'm assuming a value for X bar, right? I'm just assuming that X bar is two, right? I'm just assuming. Close the bracket. Again, open a bracket. Again, press shift. Just find out uh, there is a button near to the closing bracket uh, button that is S and D. Above that S and D, you can find Y in red color. So Y, right, alpha Y, minus i'm assuming a value right i'll repeat i'm assuming a value as five and close bracket right so just i open the bracket first open a bracket then we have to type x letter we have to type the letter x for typing the letter x press alpha and search in that um, dark blue buttons there is a button for closing bracket to close the bracket, there is a button. So if you see near that button, just above that, you can find X letter in red color. So if you press that one, right? So open bracket, press alpha, and press close bracket, you will get X, 
then press minus and just I am assuming a value 2 instead of x bar I am assuming right so in your case you have to put the value which you have calculated then close the bracket again open a bracket alpha the you have to find y then y minus and any other value for y bar I'm just assuming in your case you have to take it from your sums and close bracket right so this is the thing first you have to do you have to enter the formula which we are going to calculate right is everyone okay with that if anyone have an issue unmute yourself and speak So no one, shall I move on? Hi. So after doing this, press the button, calc button, C-A-L-C button. Right. Once you press the calc button, the calculator will ask the value for X. It will ask you to enter the value for X. What is the value for X? In our question, the first value for X is 18.7. So you have to enter that value 18.7 after entering 18.7 press equal once you press equal it will ask the value for y so you have to enter the value the same value the in the same row if x1 then y1 so that is 91 after entering both the values the calculator will give the value for this entire expression so you can change it to decimals I hope you all know how to change that, right? Uh, so you know the first value for xi minus x bar into yi minus y bar. Okay. Similarly, we have to calculate this for all 11 values. So just you have to change the x and y values. So again, you can press the calc button. You have to give the next value 17.84x and 754 why so it you will get, get the next value so similarly you have to repeat this for every 11 values so it will take either one or two minutes that's true so after filling the table then you have to just adapt it all so you have to just find the sigma right so the first part is complete so if you go to the whiteboard screen right we know we have completed this part. So we just filled these things. So after filling everything, you have to just add up and find the sigma here. Now I hope that you all can handle this one. So I'll just show that also, right? So in the other case here, just you have to clear this one. For the next case, open record, we have to enter x minus x bar that the calculated value, you have to enter the calculated value, close bracket, and you have to enter a squared and press the calc button. So it will ask the value for x. So 18.7. So you will get the first value. Again, you can enter the next value. So that is if you press the calc button, and you have to enter 17.8 you'll get the next value so again if you enter the uh, enter you have on the enter the third value press the calc button and enter the third value let's assume 20 so you'll get the next value so similarly you have to repeat this one so after doing this you have to just add up everything and repeat the same step for yi minus phi bar add up everything after adding everything it's a normal operation just you have to divide with the square root of the value so you can simply find that coloration thing so is everyone okay with this do i need to explain this again in tamil or singhala anyone
प्रश्न आना था सो सो प्लीज रिपीट एक्स माइनस टू राइट सो हियर जस्ट यू हैव टू ओपन अ ब्रैकेट प्लस अल्फा एंड टेक द एक्स लेटर माइनस टू क्लोज द ब्रैकेट एंड यू कैन फाइंड दैट देयर इज अ बटन to enter squared mark so that's in that uh, second row in the dark blue button see it's in the second row third button so you have to press that one and enter calc so after that you have to press any values and find that respective one uh, somebody has raised their hand uh, any issues oppo a57 okay are you all fine with this correlation coefficient thing are you all fine with handling the calculator now with the calc option Okay, the problem is we can do this entire equation uh, with calculator, but the problem here is the sigma one, right? The sigma is the problem, right? Uh, if x is in some progression or in arithmetic or geometric progression, we can do this entirely with the calculator. But uh, there are also in this case you have to do some writing without doing some writing filling the table you can't handle that one you need to fill the table so it won't take much time if you practice this with the calculator you can finish this filling the table thing within 5 minutes after finishing that it's matter of seconds maybe 1 minute to calculate the correlation value right so in for this question the correlation value is around 0.9 or something if i remember correctly uh, so if it is 0.9 it is very close to 1 right so if it is 1 our uh, our data set is exactly equal so it's a perfect data set so if it is closer to 9 we know already this is a positive one so it is we can say it is strongly positive very much strongly positive we can say that well, that's why they are asking us to comment again confirm the relationship type right so next is the best fit line thing right so here for best fit line right if you see the equation again right we'll go to the equation right here now i assume that you can handle this equation with the knowledge of that correlation thing and calculator right so you know how to use the option right so using that you can easily find these terms so that is the xi squared the in values uh so in part b how we identify the relationship right anybody uh, do i have to do this thing again so for this one for parameters uh, beta 1 you need an additional term which is yi into xi so you need to enter a formula in the calculator as xy and just give the values and find out what are the x y s and add up those things so sigma of uh, y i you know you just need to add up all the y values sigma of x i is also you know you need to add up all the x values you know what is n total number of values 11 here you have to add up all the x i square x i squared so there are two different terms so you have to be careful with here right here this is a different term and this is a different term right so be careful with the the first term this term you have to square the values first 
then add up everything first square it then add up the second term is you have to add everything and then you have to take squared see the bracket is outside the sig sigma mark so first we have to add up everything and then you have to square it so that's it so i assume you can handle this part if you if you can handle this part this is fairly easy just you have to use the average values and calculate that one the mean values so if you calculate this part we can find the equation right in the meantime uh, in part b how we identify the relationship in part b yeah you just observe the scatter plot observe the scatter plot and see whether x values when x values increase see whether y value also increase if both increase then it's positive if if when x increases if y decreases then it is negative uh, for example for civil students i can say that uh, viscosity viscosity is a parameter which decreases with temperature when temperature increase viscosity decreases so that is a negative correlation right so length length my wife of wife I got restarted uh so the length is length of a rod is an positive correlation right with temperature so when temperature increases the length of the rod also increase so it is a positive correlation right can you understand what is negative correlation and positive correlation negative uh, either correlation or relationship whatever it is so are you okay with this question should i explain more or shall we move to another question yeah i got one message that it is clear so i hope you can handle this scatter plot question either it is new syllabus students or old syllabus students for old syllabus students usually it is uh question number 3 for new syllabus students as per the model paper it is at question number 9 so either people can handle it right okay so most of the people wanted to move to the another question i there is one student who wanted to explain it again please remain at the end of the session so i'll explain it again okay uh okay so the next thing i wanted to explain is the matrix part so that is the um, uh, projection part right so are there any issues in finding the eigen vectors right if you all are clear with finding eigen vectors i can directly move on to uh, projection part or else i'll explain the pro so i will have to start from the first okay let's see that one right the question is right question number 9 right so let uh, there is an quadratic equation uh, so they want us to write the symmetric uh, matrix right so we'll write the symmetric matrix so always in the symmetric matrix right the symmetric matrix has a pattern right so this is the theoretical pattern so the first row the first place this is the place for the coefficient of x1 squared so the next place is for x1 x2 right so this place is for x1 x3 so here this is for x2 x1 and this is for x2 squared the next place is for x2 x3 right so that is simply if you name the matrix in this manner 1 2 3 
and here one two three so this is one comma one this point is one comma one so x one square this point is one comma two this is one comma two so x one comma x two this is one comma three so x one x three similarly we can fill the char matrix so here this is x three x one here this is x three x two here this is x three square right if you note this properly you can see x1 squared x2 squared x3 squares are each at one place but other terms that is x1 x2 it is at another place x2 x1 x1 x3 is at another place as x3 x1 and x2 x3 is at another place as x3 x2 that's why when we are writing the coefficient for these terms that is these terms we have to divide it by 2 because they are at two places right for these terms you have to divide it by 2 and write the coefficient so this would be equivalent to if you fill the table looking at uh, the quadratic equation x1 squared x2 squared x3 squared all three are positive so 1 1 1 other all three terms has a coefficient of minus 2 so we have to divide it by 2 so minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and minus 1 right simple as that right so the first part is over so the next part is find the eigenvalues and its corresponding eigenvectors to find the eigenvalues you have to take you have to write a minus lambda times i and take the modulus of this and you have to equate this to zero this is the characteristic equation you have to find the characteristic equation and take the determin determinant of it and equate it to zero so after subtracting so you we know what is i i is a unit matrix so if we multiply it by lambda you we will get a matrix where the diagonal only has lambda so something like this right so what is a so a is 1 1 1 here minus 1 here also minus 1 here minus 1 here minus 1 here minus 1 and here minus 1 so minus lambda times so 1 1 and 1 other places are 0 so, so this is the thing right so after subtracting only the diagonal will change so here this one becomes 1 minus lambda this is also 1 minus lambda this is also 1 minus lambda so here 1 min minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and minus 1 so we have to take the determinant of this one right so how you know how to take determinants right so i'll erase this above portion So the determinant we have to keep this one minus lambda and multiply these two right these two values so one minus lambda squared minus we have to multiply the other cross two so minus one into minus one that is plus one so similarly you know how to take the determinant i think everyone knows how to take determinant so the next term we have to keep this minus one so that is this value we have to keep this value so since it is the second term we already have a minus and with this minus so the initial term is minus one so again in the brackets we have to multiply minus one into one minus lambda minus minus one into minus one right so the third term will be plus minus one into these two things we have to multiply these two and these two so the determinant part i am not going to explain right so you know this one right you know how to find determinants right after finding determinant you have to equate it to zero and solve the equation you will get a cubic equation that is in terms of lambda cube you will get a cubic equation from this equation you will get three answers for lambda right alpha beta gamma Three answers those three answers are these values right 
right so we we get lambda equal minus 1 lambda equal 2 and lambda equal 2 right so when when you substitute lambda equal minus 1 right so we are going to find, now we have found the eigen values after finding the eigen values we have to find the eigen vectors to find the eigen vectors we have to substitute the lambda values into our characteristic equation so we are going to substitute lambda equal minus 1 right in lambda equal minus 1 so here if we substitute lambda equal minus 1 only the diagonal will change right so the diagonal will change and it will become 2 as 1 minus minus 1 so the diagonals will become 2 so here 2 2 and 2 so 1 1 1 1 oh sorry everything a minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and minus 1 right so this is our characteristic equation right we have to somewhat solve this the characteristic equation and find the eigen vector to find that one so we have to just add a term here that is x y z or x y x1 x2 x3 equals zero so if you write this in this format it's easy it's easy to calculate so i hope that you all remember row operation and column operation right so row operation and column operation is doing an operation using entire row or entire column so we'll do with row operation it's a bit easy right so i am going to subtract second column or second row i am going to subtract second row from first column sorry first row so 2 minus minus 1 that becomes 3 minus 1 minus 2 that becomes minus 3 minus 1 minus 1 that becomes 0 right and similarly i am going to subtract third row from second row that is r2 minus r3 so r2 minus r3 gives me and i'll going to substitute in the second row place so that going to give me 0 3 and minus 3 so here i'll get minus 1 minus 1 and 2 i'm not going to change the last one so here i'll get x these are going to, not going to change and since this side is 0 whatever the change you do in the left side there will be there won't be any change in right side right so using the first row and second row i can write a simultaneous equation as x equal y you can simplify it out that is 3x minus 3y equals 0 so x equal y from the second equation you can write y equal is z so that means x equal y that is equal to z so i am going to assume it as k so x equal y that is equal to z so i am going to assume it as k so the matrix x y z can be written as k times 1 1 1 is it okay so the eigen vector is 1 comma 1 comma 1 uh any doubts if you want you can ask uh yes. has asked, asked can we do without row or column operation obviously uh you can do but how are you hoping to solve that one you can use the general simultaneous equation idea you can take three equations and solve uh, uh, using uh, O-level knowledge and you can solve that one. That's also not an issue. But ultimately, you will get this relationship. Finally, you will get this one. That is x equal y equal z. Right? How we get go 1 comma 1 comma 1? So, we have found from row operation that is x equal y and y equal z. So, that means x equal y that is equal to z that is equal to k. Right? So I am writing the matrix x comma y, x y is said as k, k and k. So when you take this common letter k outside, you can come to this one. So that is our eigen vector. Right? Okay. 
So I'll explain the other one also. For the next question, our eigen vector was our eigen value was two, right? Lambda equal two. We got the answer twice. So lambda equal two answer. We got it twice. So definitely you will get two eigen vectors from that. If you get the same answer two times, you will get two ve two uh, eigen vectors from the same value. If you get the same answer, let's assume you are getting lambda equal four. Three times, so you will get three eigen vectors for that single value, right? So I am going to just erase only the necessary parts. So only these diagonals will change, right? So I am going to substitute uh, two. 1 minus lambda in terms of lambda i'm going to substitute 2 so 1 minus 2 is minus 1 so again every term becomes minus 1 so all the nine terms in this equation sorry in this matrix is minus 1 now right so what is the one and only equation you can find that is minus x minus y minus z equals zero. This is the only equation you can find from this matrix. You can't do any row operation. You can't do any column operation because if you subtract one row from another row, all three terms will become zero. So you can't do anything, right? So I am going to change the equation as I'm going to multiply by minus. So X plus Y plus Z equal zero. So I'm going to assume that X as P and Y as Q. So when you assume these two values, you can find Z as minus P minus Q. Is this okay? So after finding these value, right? So we can write the matrix X comma, sorry, X, Y, Z as minus P minus Q and minus, sorry, uh, this is not minus P, right? Sorry. So that is plus P. That is plus P plus Q and minus P comma minus Q, right? So I'm going to write this in this manner. So this is equal to P zero minus P plus zero Q minus Q. Can you all understand what I have done here? I have just separated the P variables and separated the Q variables. So after this, you can take out the P outside. That is the common, uh, common thing outside. So one zero minus one here. If you take Q out, you can get zero, one, minus one. So these two will be this and this will be the other two eigenvectors. Can we change the order of the Egan value? You mean uh, order means uh, first calculating lambda equal to and then calculating lambda equal minus one. Is that so? Shashmita, yes. Yeah, you can change it. That's not an issue. You'll get the same answer. Right, is everyone okay with this one? So we know Egan values now, three Egan vectors, right? So the Egan vectors are Right, you see our see our scheme. Right, let's see. Right, here see, we got these things. We got all these matrices. So one comma one comma one. You might notice that this order is not in the same. So in our answer, we got zero one minus one. Here it is upside down. So that can interchange. That is not an issue. You will get the correct answer, right? 
so the next thing is the normalized eigen vector that is a simple part right normalizing a eigen vector means you have to divide it by its modulus so for 1 comma 1 comma 1 for for this vector the modulus is root 3 so they have divided by root 3 modulus mean you have to square each number add all three and take a square root that's all for the next thing also similar thing so i think the normalizing part is easy right so the orthogonal vectors the projecting thing is the harder one right so first of all in while projecting right so i am not going to explain what is projecting right because it's way too close to the exam you will get confused so first of all i was uh, confused uh, when i my lecturer taught me then i it, it took some time to realize what is happening so i am not going to reveal that at the time of the exam right uh, do you get root 6 Yeah, while projecting, we will we will get that value, right? So in the projection part, right? Right. There is a certain way to write that one. Right. You may mean it. Our first eigen vector was right. Our first eigen vector was one comma one comma one. You can start from any vector, right? That's not an issue. I am starting from this one. This was our first one, right? So I am going to first find the first orthogonal vector v one. So v one is equal to u one by mod of u. So we already know the value. That is mod of this one is root three. So the answer is one by Root three, comma one by root three, comma one by root three. So finding this one is not a big issue, right? The next thing is the trickier one, right? Right. So the next uh, part is you need to write an equation, a particular equation, right? That is v two, right? Is equal to u one minus sorry u two minus u two minus projection of right projection pre or pro right projection of w one into u two. This should be multiplied by v one, right? If I am right, let's check. Not by multiply by v one. Sorry. Not multiply by v one. Right, just this. And and we have to divide this one by mod of u two minus projection of. W one into u. So don't think that this is a hard calculation, right? This is an easy calculation. Right? This one expands into right this term u two minus projection of w one into u two. That is equal to u two minus u two v one into v one. Right? U two v one into v one just dot product, right? So let what is our u two? We know what is v one. V one is here. That's available for us. We need to find what is u two, right? U two is our uh, next vector, right? Next eigen vector. Our next eigen vector was uh, minus one over root two, one over root two comma zero, right? Am I right? So this is u one. Our u two is minus one over root two, 
comma one over root two comma zero right u two into v one so that is a dot product so u two into v one means we have to multiply minus one over root two by one over root three first term by first term so when you multiply these two things you will get minus one over root six remember that value minus one over root six so next you have to multiply the second term with second term so you will get one over root six positive value so first term was minus one over root six second term was one over root six the third term is obviously zero zero into one over root three zero so you have now three terms you have to add all these three terms first term minus one over root six second term one over root six third term zero when you add all these three values you will get zero right so zero into v1 obviously zero so u2 is so this expression is directly equal to u2 so v2 is equal to u2 divided by so we know what is this this is u2 by mod of u2 right is everyone okay with that oh sorry my u2 value is wrong right not this one my u2 value is wrong no one said that what is my u2 that is without this root things isn't it minus 1 comma 1 So either way, you will get the same answer. Right? So here, the answer would be minus one, comma one, comma zero, divided by root two. Okay. How to get root two? Root two is that is you have uh, modulus. You have to square this all three values. That is, you have to square this one. That is equal to one. You have to square this one. That is also equal to one. You have to square this one. That is zero. When you add all these three, right? If you add all these three, you will get root two. Sorry, you will get two. Then you have to take square root or root two, right? So that is the Eigen vector v two, the normalized Eigen vector, right? So the next one. V three, right? So we know what is U one. Calculate the V one part is not an issue. So we know U two that is given to us. This projection. This is a formula. You have to just keep this in mind. That's all, right? Uh. Right. Someone is asking that why can't we find v two as we find v one? So the actual theory behind this is we are transforming every vectors to a normalized plane, right? To a different plane, right? That's why we are projecting it, right? Uh, so something like when we resolve forces, uh, we take f cos theta, f sin theta. Something like that, right? Since these are higher order vectors, we can do that that simply, right? Uh, I don't want to take too much you all into that. It's a bit confusing thing, right? So just keep that in mind. That is the thing we are doing here, right? We are changing the plane. We are projecting all the vectors to a certain plane. That's why it's called as projection. Right. So after finding v one, v one is simple, right? So the v for v two, we have to project it. So simply like we are bringing v two to the plane of v one, something like that. Right? So that equation is right. So the equation is this one. That is u two minus projection w one into u two over mod of that same thing, right? So when we see Right. So the expansion is 
the expansion to this is this one right this is the expansion that is u2 minus u2 times v1 into v1 right so when you multiply u2 by v1 that is dot product first term by first term second term by second term and third term by third term in this case you no need to multiply by third term since one of the third term is zero right so first term will give you a value of minus 1 over root 3 second terms will give a value of 1 over root 3 right so minus 1 over root 3 plus 1 over root 3 is 0. So the dot product is 0. So 0 into V1 is obviously 0. So this entire expression reduces to U2. So we only need U2. So that's why here I have equated this to U2 by mod of U2. We know U2 and we have divided by mod of U2. So we know the second vector, projected vector, right? The third one, V3 that is equal to u3 minus projection of w1 u3 over mod of u3 minus projection of w1 into u3 right so here this one expands right this expands this is a bit there will be another additional term that is u3 minus u3 v1 into v1 minus u3 sorry minus u3 into v2 into v2 something like this right there is there is only one additional term right so what is our u3 first of all we'll just write down our u3 value so our u3 is uh, minus 1 0 1 right minus 1 0 and 1 it is our u3 so here i'll leave this u3 part here minus u3 into v1 so what is u3 into v1 minus 1 into 1 over root 3 first term by first term so minus 1 over root 3 no need to consider the second term the third term is 1 over root 3. So 1 over root 3 in positive. So when you multiply again, this is 0. Right? Minus u3 into v2. u3 into v2. So u3 into v2. So minus 1 into minus 1 over root 2. So that is plus 1 over root 2. Second term also we no need to consider. Third term also we no need to consider because of the zeros. Right? So the answer is, here is 1 over root 2. We know what is V2. V2 we have already found. That is minus 1 over root 2, comma 1 over root 2. Right? And here it's 0. Here this is just multiplying by scalar. Just like multiplying two numbers. We know what is U3. Right? U3 is minus 1, comma 0, comma 1, minus. When you multiply these two values, we will get uh, minus 1 minus 1 over 2, right? When you multiply the next two terms, we'll get half and 0. Here, just subtract these two. So we'll get minus 3 by 2. Uh, oh, sorry, not minus 3 by 2. It's minus half, right? Minus half. The next term is also minus half. And the last term is 1, right? Am I right? So the next thing is the projecting. So we have to find what is V3. So what is the mod of these things? So minus one over two uh, squared and again minus one over two squared plus one squared. So and you have to just divide it and find the modulus value. So 0.5 squared plus 0.5 squared plus one. And square root of that answer. So that is square root of how much? 3 by 2. Square root of 3 by 2. Right? So here you have to write these values minus half 
minus half comma one right what can you do here for the both up for, for the both numerator and denominator i'm going to multiply this entire equation by two the entire fraction so if you multiply the entire fraction by two what will be the answer here v3 would be equal to minus one comma minus one here this one becomes two divided by two times square root here there will be a two right so if you cancel the square root of two and that thing you will get root six right just check with the scheme is this okay we'll just check with the scheme yeah it's correct right any doubts here in projecting part just you need to remember one equation that's all right again the same question why here it is zero right so uh, one person is asking why this is zero this one right so for the last time right here they are asking us to take a dot product you have to multiply u2 by v1 so what is u2 this is our u2 and this is our v1 take the first term that is minus 1 and multiply by 1 over root 3 you will get minus 1 over root 3 plus take the second term 1 and you multiply by 1 over root 3 you will get plus 1 over root 3 when you take the third term and multiply by the third term you will get zero so add all these three you will get zero so zero times inside the bracket you are getting zero so zero times v1 is always zero that's all okay right so we know now we have found the matrix p right so i'll just move on to the scheme now right if you see the scheme we have got this answer right we have projected it now this is the p value right so in some situation we no need to find projection value we can get orthogonal directly it means v1 equal u1 by mod of u1 so how we identify uh if they are orthogonal uh no in most of the case you have to project it you can't directly find that they are a projected ones right if if we if we have if in some how if you prove that it is orthogonal uh, i don't remember that orthogonal part right if i am right i can't remember that uh, method to prove it as orthogonal uh if you prove it orthogonally uh, in the first case you no need to do this projection part right uh there is one way if i am right uh, you have to just do cross dot product to all um to prove that it is orthogonal you have to take dot product to all the three eigen vectors so when you t- take uh, eigen vectors and uh, do dot product for each of each pairs for 1 1 and 2 then 1 and 3 then 2 and 3 if 
if you do in that manner everything should become zero if that becomes zero then it is orthogonal or else you have to do the projection part if i remember correctly that is the method right uh, so at the beginning there was a question to use how to use the calculator to calculate the value of d right so shall we move on to that then any other doubts here anyone Shashmita, anything? No. Right. And the multiple part, then. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, then we will move on to the calculator part, right? So now here in the calculator, you need to find p inverse into a into p, right? We know what is p now, right? We have found uh, what is p. so i'll share the calculator screen you can use your calculator right so first of all you know to change into a matrix mode so press mode then uh number 6 right then select a matrix 1 right matrix 1 and the order is 3 by 3 so again number 1 So now you have to enter the matrix. So I am going to enter the matrix P first. So remember, the calculator doesn't know uh, it as P. So it is remembering it as A. So our in question paper it is P. In the memory of calculator it is A. So don't get confused, right? So I am going to enter the matrix. So one divided by root 3 that is the first term right the second term is minus 1 by root 2 so you all also can uh, add the matrix with me right the my, uh, third term is minus 1 by uh, root 6 the fourth term 1 by root 3 the fifth term is 1 by root 2 The sixth term minus one by root six, and the seventh term is one by root three, and next is zero, and the last term is two by root six, two by root six, right? So I have entered all the terms. After entering all the terms, to make it sure, to enter equal marks one or twice. right once or twice press the equal mark after pressing the equal marks once or twice just clear uh, press ac right again is everyone have everyone completed that step whoever doing this calculation with me if they have completed i can move to the next one just uh, drop a message So the last term is two by root six, not one by root six. So did I enter it as uh, two two one by root six? Any mistake by me? Let's check. the last term is hmm 
you know the last term, term seems to be correct 2 by root 6 right okay so to enter the next uh, next matrix shift plus 4 and go to one dimensions and already i have given matrix a into the memory so i am going to choose matrix b that is 2 again 3 by 3 now we have to enter our matrix a in our paper it is matrix a right so the matrix a is in the memory of calculator it is matrix b that is 1 minus 1 minus 1 again minus 1 the fifth term is 1 others minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and the last term is 1 and press one or twice the equal mark and clear the press ac so first of all okay have you all completed shall i move to the next one right so i am going to the next one press shift select 4 and i am going to select matrix a that is in our paper it is matrix p in the memory of calculator it is matrix a so matrix a we need p inverse so i am going to press p inverse into matrix b shift 4 and it is 4 because matrix b in the memory of calculator it is matrix b but in our paper that is matrix a right into shift 4 and again matrix a that is p inverse into a into p so after entering this formula you have to just press equal so you are getting the answer minus 1 2 and 2 so we are getting the same answer in the scheme Is it okay now, uh, Kavi Kumar? kumar right after filling the matrix so uh mr fazil you have filled the matrix right anna konja thirupi speed ah solla mudiyuma right uh, matrix fill pannitinga thambi so i'll uh, repeat in both sinhala and uh, tamil okay uh, matrix fill pannitinga thambi ஓ மேட்ரிக்ஸ் வந்து ஏ இல்ல அந்த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் லன் திருப்பி நான் கிளியர் பண்ணிட்டேன் ஓகே மேட்ரிக்ஸ் ஏ ஃபில் பண்ணி மேட்ரிக்ஸ் பி யும் ஃபில் பண்ணிட்டீங்களா ரெண்டு கால்்குலேட்டர் தி மெமரிக்கு நீ ஃபில் பண்ணிட்டீங்களா 1 ஓவர் 3 வெயிட் பண்ணு ஆ நோ யூ நோ नीड டு ஷோ தி கால்்குலேஷன் we have the calculator so we can give the final answer we no need to show the steps so once you enter the matrix and if you press the equal marks one or two eyes it will keep it it in it memory unless if you press on button again so if you press the on button again or if you clear the memory that is shift and 9 if you press shift and 9 Uh, the calculator memory will be erased other or if you change the mode if you change uh, the mode of the calculator from uh, matrix to equation or normal computations or cal- complex uh, uh, computations then the matrix will be erased so or you have to change it 
until that point the calculator will keep that matrix in its mind so first of all you have to do you have to give the um, matrix to the memory of the calculator right you have to select any name you can select a matrix a matrix b matrix c it's up to your convenience but you have to remember which matrix is given to which letter what is a what is b and what is c right right so after uh, entering those matrices to the memory we know we need to find p inverse we need to find p inverse into a into p so as per my calculator i know what is p p means in my calculator that is a so i am going to press shift and i am going to press 4 and uh, in this menu you can find that is matrix a is by number 3 so that is 3 right okay. uh, you have to uh, select dim not data dim right okay. uh so the matrix a and this is p right so if this is p you have to change it to inverse so press the inverse mark into so the next matrix we need is by in our question paper that is a in my calculator memory that is matrix b so i am selecting matrix b into shift matrix at last i need p again so again it is 3 so matrix a inverse into matrix b into matrix a so after pressing equal you will get the answer if answer come in decimal point in matrix how we can change in xy uh, by calculator right now you see now uh, the, now here in this display you can see that uh, the minus 1 is highlighted and that minus 1 is at the bottom corner right similarly i'll show that to um right here see now here that is a minus uh, so here it is in decimal format right there's a button to change this one no, it's not changing here it's not changing but in the calculator it should change sometimes if it is expressible in uh, fraction format it will show so in this case i think it is not showing because a uh, uh, root is involved so this is 1 by root 6 right something like that no 1 by root 3 those kinds of value cannot be changed to fraction those are irrational fun- um, uh, fractions rational numbers irrational numbers there are some numbers which cannot be changed to fraction formats for example pi you can't uh, sorry uh, not pi um these root values so 1 over root 2 cannot be written in an uh, fraction format fraction in the sense you can't write it as 2 by 5 something like that so you can't express this number as a fraction so if you want to express this as a fra- fraction you have to something like write it as 577 by 1000 right so that is also not exact so it's better to write in um, decimal format if it is changeable in fraction the calculator will change it by uh, changing that s comma d button sd button using that we can change kavi kumar is it okay anyone else uh, should i tell in uh, tamil or singhala again in anyone for singhala முதல்ல பிறகுலாமா சில வேலை இந்த கேள்விக்கு சில வேலை விட வரும் சரியா ஆனா மெட்ரிக்ஸ் அப்படி பேருக்குள்ள பிழைக்கும் 
இலக்கம் ஒன்றுக்கும் தாயம் ஒன்றுக்கும் வித்தியாசம் இருக்கு அதாவது இலக்கம் என்றா நீங்க ரெண்டு தரம் மூன்றும் மூன்று தரம் ரெண்டும் சமன் ரைட் ஆனா தாயம் அப்படி இல்ல தாயத்துக்கு ஏ தர பின்ற தாயம் வேற பி தர ஏன்ற தாயம் வேற அப்ப நீங்க என்ன தர என்ன ஆர்டர்ல பெருக்கணுமோ அதே ஆர்டர்ல பெருக்கிறது தான் பெட்டர் ஒரு பேப்பருக்கு வந்து மட்டமாரி குடுக்க அப்படி பி ஏ பி இன்வர்ஸ் குடுக்க சரியான ஆன்சர் வருது மற்ற ரெண்டு பேப்பருக்கு மாத்தி குடுக்க பி இன்வர்ஸ் ஏ பி என்று குடுக்க தான் சரியா வருது மாறி வந்துச்சு தானே அந்த மாறி வந்ததுக்கு வந்து பி இன்வர்ஸ் ஏ பி என்று குடுக்க சரியா வருது இல்ல ஆர்டர் சரியா குடுக்கணும் ரைட் சம்மன் ஹாஸ் ஆஸ்ட் தட் டைமென்ஷன் ஏர சோ ஐ திங்க் யூ ஹேவ் செலக்டட் சம் ராங் ஆர்டர் ஆஃப் தி மேட்ரிக்ஸ் சோ ஜஸ்ட் செக் இட் अगेन so the thing she was asking tamil is that uh, so when you are multiplying matrices please remember to multiply in the order that they have given p inverse ap first p inverse then a then p don't change that order if you change the order you can't get the answer right matrices should be multiplied in that particular order right uh, so any other questions is there any Uh, no questions we can move to the next session right okay the next thing was uh, most last was the rlc circuit right so in the rlc circuit the question number 7 right Uh, question number 7 right let's see that one the curve of law in the curve of law right they are give they are they have given all the equations so just it's some substituting things right so the equation is pl plus pr plus vc equal our emf et right so the vl is l times di by dt plus vr is i into r plus this is 1 over c into integration of i into dt right so here it is our emf et so you can substitute the value for l right we know i is equal to d q by dt so di by dt means you have to differentiate this one once again so you will get second differentiation so l into d squared q by dt squared so here in terms of i i am writing r into dq by dt plus 1 over c into here also again in terms of i i am writing dq by dt right into 
dt right equal et right so here these first two terms we no need to do anything you you can bring this down and substitute the values for l and r right so here also one over c part will come down and we can cancel dt and dt so if you integrate dq we'll get q so that would be equal to et right so here l times what is l value of l uh, l is 50 uh, micro henry sorry milli henrys so 50 into 10 to the power minus 3 so d squared q over dt squared plus what is r r is 150 so 150 dq by dt plus 1 over c so 1 over c means 1 over 10 microfarad so that is 1 over 10 micro means 10 to the power minus 6 so when it comes up so it's 10 to the power plus 6 into q equal this value so this is the equation right so bear with my writing i am writing with the mouse so it's a bit difficult right so you can use uh, you need to find two solution but that is complementary solution and particular solution particular integral this part is easy right to find the complementary solution you need to write an uh, auxiliary equation that is a e auxiliary equation just substitute uh, m for m or x or whatever the uh, another english letter for dq by dt right so if you substitute let's say m so that becomes 50 into 10 to the power minus 3 m squared plus 150 into m plus 10 to the power 5 let's you take this as 0 and you can use the calculator and find two values for m so we use the calculator right and you can write the qc that is the complementary solution qc right give me a minute and just thicken this up so qc right a into that is arbitrary constant e to the power i'm assuming this solution as alpha and beta right uh right minus well not minus i'm thinking it's just directly alpha into t right because this function varies with the time so this is time right plus b into e to the power beta t this is the complementary function part right that is somewhat uh, easy part right most of the people struggle when coming to find this uh, qp that is uh, the particular integral uh, the difficult part is using trial function a trial function means so here if you see the format of uh, et the format of e et is 100 sine uh, some 1500 t right so we have to take the general format of this we have to take the general format that is uh, some c some constant uh, c1 cos 1500 t plus uh, c2 sine 1500 t and you have to apply that to the differential equation solve it and go on and go on and you can find it in that manner that is the thing that is explained in the scheme it's a bit uh, lengthy method but you you can find right the other thing is the d operator method right so i'll after this i'm going to move on to the d operator so if there is any doubt up to this point please ask now so i don't know what about the statistics theory part uh, thing uh, so 
no while uh, pro- proving the complementary e- uh, solution uh, this is a theory we take this as zero that is how the complementary solution is proved there are two uh, there are um, different types of uh, differential equation one is homogeneous and non homogeneous when this is zero right you will get a particular solution that is the complementary solution if this is not zero we will get another solution that is this one right when this differential equation is directly zero if this et term is completely zero that solution is known as complementary solution right if there is a particular value like this in this case similar to this case we will get a complementary solution as well as a particular solution to find a complementary solution first we have to make this as zero and find this actually this is last year thing 1b mathematics right i mean the level 3 mathematics right so i am going to move to the next part the d operator part so here it is 50 times 10 to the power minus 3 if you divide this and you make it you can make it as a simple equation also right so i am going to use that type of simple equation and i am going to take that from the scheme right uh, so that is uh, here that is d squared over dt squared plus 3000 dq by dt 3000 dq by dt plus 2 into 10 to the power 6 right here 2 into 10 to the power 6 Q equal hundred. If I'm right, is is it hundred? No, ah, it's again two thousand. Sorry. So here this is two thousand sine thousand five hundred t. Right. So we are going to use d operator. Right. The theory behind d operator is f of d squared. f of d squared right sin ax is equal to f of minus a squared into sin ax right so shall i explain this d operator thing or can you all uh, figure it out It's a bit a lengthy process, not much, not as lengthy as trial function, but still there are a bit uh, a fair amount of uh, calculation behind this, right? So this is same for cos also. No any change. So this is cos a x equal to f of minus a squared into cos a x, right? they are asking me to explain so i am going to go on right first of all we have to change these as operators operator in the sense d by dt this is equal unto capital d that's all so we can change this equation we can change this equation here as capital d squared plus 3000 d Plus two into ten to the power minus sorry ten to the power six, right? Two into ten to the power six, or thing into Q P. So while we are inserting this D, we omitted this Q, right? We were not considering this Q. So all these Qs are. Taken out as and written as particular integral. So we are going to find a particular integral. 
so this is equal to 2000 sine 150 sorry 1500 t right after that you have to divide this entire portion to the next side uh, yes ahana you are raising your hand So here constant is a not an issue, right? Constant is not an issue. You can take that out, right? Other terms you can you can't take out, right? Since this 2000 doesn't have any T inside that, I simply took that out, right? Other than that, you can do that, right? The first thing here is you want to check whether this can be factorized, right? Can you all remember how to do the factorizing thing way back in grade six, grade nine, 10, just factorizing, right? The factors for this is D plus two, 2000 and D plus uh, um, 1000. How to find that quickly? Simply use the calculator. If you use the calculator and find the solutions for this, right? If you are having the calculator with you all now, you can do that. You just use the calculator and find the solutions. Right? If you use the calculator and enter it, I am doing it right now. If you all, you can do that. So one answer is minus 1000 and the other answer is uh, minus 2000. So that means one factor is D plus 1000 and another factor is D plus 2000. Right, so in that case, so these are my tricks, okay? So I'm going to reveal my tricks in uh, doing partial fractions. So 2000 into, right? So always when writing factors, write the smaller factor in front. That is always write the smaller factor in front, D plus 1000, and write the larger factor behind that is d plus 2000 so bear with my writing uh, so it's very difficult to write with mouse right so somebody has asked how to use this one in calculator oh man yes i'll just show that quickly so go to mode take the equation that is five in five, just find the format. Our format is third format. That is x squared plus bx plus c, a x squared plus bx plus c, that format. So select number three. So what is our a? Our a is one. So plus one, plus equal. Our a is plus 3,000. So 3,000. So our b is two times 10 to the power, two times 10 to the power six. Right, that is our C, then plus equal. So after entering all these three data, if you eat plus equal, you will get X1 as minus uh, 1000 and X2 as minus 2000. That's all. Right, it's very simple using calculator. You can find it out. Right. So this is the thing. Now we know the factors, right? So we have done the partial fraction thing. Now, but still we have find what is the numerator? What is the top part what we have to write here so this is a bit mind calculation thing just imagine you are having one and one here right you are having one at the both circles at both green circles imagine you have one so now i am going to go in the reverse direction if you are going from here to here in this manner we we would multiply both the terms at the bottom so the d plus 2000 term will come here and D plus 1000 term will come here. So when you subtract D and D cancels out 2000 minus 1000, you will get 1000. Actually in the numerator, we have only one, but you are getting 1000. So to cancel the 1000, you have to divide this by 
thousand. So the answer here is one and one. I hope that you all got that one. Right, or else you can follow the traditional method A over D plus thousand plus B over D plus two thousand, and you can find it out. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So into sine thousand five hundred T. Right. So if you observe. Carefully, D operators are given only for D squared, not for D. D operators are given for D squared values, right? Not for the D values. So, uh, we have to somewhat change this D into, right? Somewhat we have to change this D values into D squared values, right? So how to change that one? I am going to multiply by, right? Observe this carefully. Then only you can handle this one. So QP, right? Here now 2000 and 1000 cancels out and two, right? So I am going to multiply it by its conjugate. Conjugate means by D minus 1000. So if you multiply by D minus 1000 in the bottom and the top, at the top you will get D minus thousand at the bottom you will get d squared minus 10 to the power 6 right thousand into thousand minus similarly here or also i am going to multiply by d minus 2000 so d minus two times so that is actually four times 10 to the power 6 and at top you will get d minus 2000 Sine thousand five hundred T. Right. Is this okay up to this point? Okay. So now, as per our uh, D operator theory, if you observe the theory. If there is any d squared terms, if there are any d squared terms with uh, sine ax and cos ax, we have to substitute minus ax squared. What is in terms of a? What is a in our case? That is 1500. We have 1500 in terms of a. So in terms of this d squared, you can substitute minus 1500 squared. Can you all understand that one? So in terms of this d squared values, this d squared and this d squared, you can substitute minus 1500 squared. Okay. So QP, so I'm going to write this in this side. So QP is equal to two times d minus 1000 here minus 1500 squared minus 10 to the power 6 minus d minus 2000 over minus 1500 squared minus 4 times 10 to the power 6 into sine 1500 t right so now this denominator part is a number now. It's very simple. You, you have to just use your calculator and find what is that value, right? So minus 1500 squared minus 10 to the power six. So you'll get a big value, right? So what is D? You know, what is D? D is first derivative with respect to time. So that is D, right? So D times 1500T. What is D times sine 1500T? That means you have to differentiate sine 1500T once with respect to time. So that will give, here there is a bracket, sorry, two into, here in the bottom, if you solve this, there is a, we are getting a value minus three, two, five, zero, zero, 
zero zero four zeros. Right. So what is the first differentiation? Thousand five hundred cos thousand five hundred. Am I right? Minus thousand into sine five hundred t. So thousand into sine thousand five hundred t. Okay, this term is completed. This one is completed. Similarly, can you do this one? And after that, you can take uh, the cos terms separately and the sine terms separately and find the particular integral qp. So after finding qp, q is equal to qc plus qp. That will be the final solution. In this qc, you will be having two unknowns. What are those? That is our A and B. To find A and B, they have given boundary conditions. The initial current and initial charge are zero. That is at T equal zero, I equal zero, and Q equal zero. So using these two, you can find A or B. I hope that you all got the D operator part. Using D operator, it's a bit easy. Are there any issues in this one? Uh, tell again the second row right side. Uh, you mean this one? This portion. Are you asking about this one? Yeah, yes. So here, so this is the extreme thing you can solve. So here after this, you don't have D squared. Now, when you observe this, pl this, play, this place, where we took the partial derivative, if you observe this place, the D is in the fraction at the bottom. If it is a, it, at the bottom, we can't do any operations. We don't know anything to do, right? So we have somewhat bring that to the top and cancel out everything in the bottom. So as per the D operator theorems, we know if there is any D squared values. According to these theorems, if there are any D squared values, we can substitute minus A squared. Right. So to bring d squared, so I did this multiplication and brought the d squared into the um, play and uh, substituted minus a squared. So after this, this is simply we know that is uh, differentiation. Capital D means differentiating with respect to time. So we know to differentiate. So what is d times sine five sine thousand five hundred t? That means you have to differentiate thousand five hundred t. That is sine thousand five hundred t once respect to time. So that is the constant will come first. That is thousand five hundred into cos thousand five hundred t minus this minus comes down and thousand times sine thousand five hundred t. Similarly, you can do for this part also. And you can find QP. After finding QP, other things are same as uh, what it is mentioned in the scheme. So only this this becomes the easy part. If you use D operator, it is very easy to solve. Uh, I'll try to uh, note uh, for this one, D operator one. I'll send a mail. Uh, it's easy for me. Uh, so at the end of this session, you will uh, receive a feedback form. With that feedback form, I'll try to attach uh, this note, so you will get that one. So you can find out some questions and some methods. Right, please, uh, if there are any doubts, please speak up. Please put the messages uh, or else we can move on to the next one.
So give me a second. I'll come back in one second. So it seems there are no any messages. So what is it? is calculated uh, in if there are any errors entire table is gone so you won't even get a part mark so it's better to avoid that one right uh, there's another question from an uh, bit old paper 2013-14 let's see that one I have to find the paper first. 14, 15, 15, 16, 12, 13, 13, 14. So 13, 14, 13, 14, what is the question number? Question number three. Consider the simple linear regression model with usual, okay, by using, show that uh, these proof things uh, you can just find in the scheme. So what is the issue here? I know what table. Where are the data for this one? You know what uh, this question? So they have just only given the mean scale value. There is only one data. Where are the observations? They take a sample of fourteen observations. So if the observations are 14, 
so the ANOVA table starts from so however this one you can feel this is 1 this is 13 this is 12 this is 12 you can find this one you have to multiply 12 times 29.0711 so these can be filled what about others we need some data right where is the data so let's see so I, I i can't remember actually i'll just see the scheme Anyone else? Any doubts? Because I'm not going to do any other sessions after this. Oh, you need to fill the ANOVA table from the data given here. Where are these data taken from? for this beta not beta one. So actually I'm not familiar with this question that much. I don't think you will get a question like this. So to be frank, I didn't prepare, right? Uh, I'm doing all of this with my memory, which I did uh, for my last year preparation. Okay. So, sorry, I can't remember what is uh, the part in this 2013-14 question. So if it is tricky, don't handle that one. Don't go to those kind of questions. I don't think they will uh, make the paper much hard for you all this time it will be somewhat easier uh, that's my I, my idea i'm not sure about that so what is the next question there was another question asked mm, 2016 17 question 2 part b evaluation integral and question 5 what in which year question 5 Uh, so Shantini, this coefficient table, I think this is from the T, uh, T table thing. That is the T analysis, T model. There are different, different of uh, models, um, the standard normalized models and uh, the gamma function. And there are different functions, the T functions. Uh, actually, that is level three statistics. I can't remember, it was way back. <laughs> two years back right uh, if you want I can uh, share a note for that one sixteen seventeen question number two and somebody asked question five and uh, if you stayed the year it's easy so sixteen seventeen Question two, B part. Evaluate D Z where path C is uh, where C is the path. So Z plus so this is Cauchy formula, right? So this is Cauchy, right? So in Cauchy, you know the formula should be within the closed path or on the closed path. So you have to arrange uh, somewhat like that. So this is a fairly simple question. It's not much hard. It's just a partial fraction thing, right? Uh, give me a minute. So I hope that D operator thing is fine. So I'm going to clear the board, right? right. 
here the Cauchy function was uh, set squared over set squared plus nine. Am I right? Oh, set over set plus nine. Sorry. So here the closed path is uh, set plus three i, right? So the closed path is set plus three i. So I am going to write this in this format. Is set over is set minus three i over is set plus three i. Am I right? Is this okay? Into integral closed loop. C. Can you all understand this one? So I have just factorized this. That means set is it squared. Okay, minus three i squared. So what is i squared? i squared is minus one. So minus one into minus it becomes plus three squared is nine. Then after factorizing, there will be two factors. One is set minus three i and other one is set plus three i. So we know this is the closed path. So this closed path should be at our bottom section. The other thing in the top. So after obtaining this format, you can simply use uh, Cauchy Raymond formula. That for there's a formula two pi i into some value. I think this would be that part. Uh, and there is a next question about question five, 2017-18. 2017-18 question 5 is RK method that that uh, RK question if I'm right uh, you are uh, speaking about the RK method one Ushantini you have raised your hand why Yes, and the 2017 the Taylor polynomial mm -hmm. mm -hmm. is the scheme. That is C A comma B and that is the C equal M comma A. 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 That is the C equal M அதுக்குள்ள <laughs> 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 ஒரு பக்கம் அறுபது தெரியும் மத்த ரெண்டு கோணத பத்தி தெரியாது அப்ப என்ன மாதிரியான முக்கோணின்றும் சொல்ல முடியாது கொஞ்சம் சிக்கல் அது அப்படியா <laughs> so since the day, uh, diameter is the data uh, in that question you uh, go with the diameter so that's easier uh, so mr 39058 i don't know what is the name uh, so you have mentioned question 5 so are you speaking about rk method so if possible please reply quickly because everyone are waiting Uh, yeah is uh, is speaking about uh, rk method so here so in rk method if you see the equations so the because this one is bit confusing as it has two equations other than that this is not a big deal right so let's move on here okay. 
So can you see the whiteboard? Please somebody reply in the chat. Can you see the whiteboard? Ah, yes, okay. So here, so the question is one formula is dy by dx is equal to x plus z and another formula is dz by dx this is equal to x squared sorry x minus y squared am i right x minus y squared right so they have given some data initial data when x equal 0 y equal 2 and z equal 1 right these are the data so here for the RK equations, we need K1, K2, K3, K4, right? So here for this equation, I'll write it as K1, K2, K3. So here K1, K2, K3. So here everything is in terms of L, right? So finally K1 is, it's very easy, right? So K1 is equal to our stepping size. So what is the stepping size? Uh, it's 0 0.1, right? The stepping size yeah it's 0 0.1 so 0 0.1 into so initial value of x is 0 plus initial value of uh, z is 1 right so the answer is 0 0.1 so here l1 l1 is equal to stepping size 0 0.1 into initial value of x is 0 and uh, initial value of y is uh, 2 so 2 squared so that is equal to minus 0 0.4 so while finding k2 right so for rk method there is um, so these are just approximations right so some particular methods like Taylor polynomials and Euler method, and this is also a method, right? They are they are they are two scientists, Ranga and Kutta, right? Uh, so just you need to memorize those equations and just substitute, right? The theory behind these things are from graphical methods. We have to from draw graphs and do step by step analysis, and you have to realize what is happening behind this. So that is not the time here. So the, that is not the exact time. Now, since it is very close to exam, just try to solve the questions, okay? So later time, you can find out what is the basic behind this if you are going to follow mathematics, right? Uh, so for in the trouble in this question is, for the next, here K2, you have to write 0 0.1. And here we have to add for the initial value of x, we have to add half of h, half of stepping size. So that is 0 plus 0 0.05, right? Plus for z, you have to add, for z, you have to take from the equation of z. So that is L1. You have to add half of L1. So what is L1? Minus 0.4, minus 0.4. What is half of L1 then? That is minus 0.2. So 1 plus minus 0.2 is 0 0.8. So if you solve this one, you will get K2. Similarly, when you are finding L2, L2 is equal to 0 0.1. You have to add uh, for X, you have to add half of H. So 0 0.05 minus here for y what is the initial value of y that is 2 for y you have to add the value from equation of y so that is 0 0.1 half of 0.1 is again 0 0.05 you have to add 0 0.05 to the initial value that is 2 so the value is 2.05 squared so if you solve this one you will find l2 so when you are finding k3 you will need this L2 here, right? And you are, when you are finding L3, you will need this K2 value here. So just like zigzag. So first you have to find K1, then L1. 
then K2, then L2, then K3, then L3. Then after, after this, you have to come to K4 and finally L4. So this is like a zigzag question. Usually we will find K1 and then go to K2, then K3, K4. So same question, same basis. Here, since there are two equations and one equation is dependent on another, so just shifting from one to another. So that is happening. And finally, you have to find the stepping value that is just some substituting the equation, that's all. I hope you got that one. So 2015, 16, fifth question, third part. Let's see what is that one. 2015, 16. 15, 16 question. Fifth question, third part. Question five, third part. What do you mean by third part? Find the exact value of Y 1.02. Is that what? Or oh, RK method. RK. So that RK is very much easy. Straightforward question. So this one, right? This question, right? So how to find this uh, K1? When you're finding K1, right? The stepping size is uh, 0 0.02. So they have given y1, that is when x equal 1, y is 0. That is the data given to you, right? So we have to use this equation, the first differential equation, right? So h, so h is 0 0.02, 0 0.02, open bracket. What is the initial value of x? Initial value of x is 1. So 2 by 1 into y, y is 0 plus one squared into e to the power one. So you will get an answer for K1. So how to do the next step? So if you know the answer for K1, for, uh, now the initial value of Y was zero. Let's assume the value of K1 as, again K1, right? So what would be the new value? The second value y1 would be 0 plus k1 by 2. You have to substitute that value here. The new value for x, initially x was 1 and now the x1 value would be 1 point. Hima. Yes. Uh, Hima, then dy by dx, uh, 2, uh, uh, two by by x. x Oh, oh. Etapata a sampurna part ekatama plus uh X Warge e to the power X. Oh etakota otana uh first part of the other gun they can be x y hmm. uh plus uh hella bage. No 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 emane uh e karala devani kalata uh gun emane emane make a salati in matter make a tamay or gi some poor ne figure. Hari, if fatule pata de cacti and one ekena x and it tekena y. X tie y tie where are they secondly and natural? The x gay initial value ekamuna the z one. Oh, ekadema k one hoyana got ekadema happy. Eva gave y gay initial value eka zero. Eka demani eka dala k one hoyla gata. Eka hari, you let two eka. Even the step packet of Ella to Kiana, X secretary, X gay initial value vector, H by two, Ekatukaranda, Kilakino. Oh, M Ekatukaram, X to Utterino, one point zero one. Harida? Ah, Hadi. I wagi stepping size a kia, the stepping size a cup, Dashama Binduai dekai. Oh, if in Bagia Kiane, Dashama Binduai ekai. Eka, X gay initial value, Ekata, Ekatukarama, Ekai Dashama Binduai eka Kilano. X k initial value का दिला दिया ना वाने पीटा हरी ये वाके y के initial y के initial value का zero 
අපිට K2 හොයන්නේ ඒගොල්ලන් කියනවා K1 එකේ භාගයක් එකතු කරන්න කියලා. එතකොට K1 එකට ඔයාට 10 10ක් කියලා උත්තරයක් ආවා නම් ඔයා මේකට 5ක් එකතු කරන්න ඕනේ. එහෙනම් Y ගේ දැන මට ඒකට මම කියලා තිබ්බේ. මම අර සම්පූර්ණ එකටම කියලා හිතුවේ. ඔව් දැනට තියෙන්නේ ඔයාට 5 කියලා. හ්ම් එහෙනම් දැන් සමීකරණ ඇතුලේ Y Y එකට ඔයා දාන්න ඕනේ 5. एक्सुलेश You can unmute and speak if you have any doubts. So I said about the choice and everything. in the last video right uh anyone any doubts or else i can stop so the so no questions so the my choices i already mentioned so i'll just mention it once again and i'll stop that one so my uh, easy question choices are first question one and uh, uh question 2 question 3 uh, and then question 5 after question 5 question 7 and question 9 so these are uh my choices these are the questions which i did this was my paper last year so those are the questions which i did in my paper right so those uh, those would be easy so rk method again you are asking about rk method right So, didn't you understand that 2015-16 question also? This one, Mr. Three Nine Zero Five Eight. I don't know whether Mr. or Miss. So here also, if you see this properly, right? When you are handling R K method. So this for the final time, ah, huh? you need only this question, this equation, and this initial condition. So here the initial condition is when x equal one, y is zero, right? That is the initial condition, right? So what is the first equation here? So here they have mentioned f of function of x comma y that function is this one this is your function right in this function you have to substitute x m and y m y x m and y m means your initial values these values right so what is h h is your stepping size so k1 is equal to 0.02 because you have given when x equal 1 you know the data so the next Question is asked when x equal 1.02. So you have to step by 0.02, right? Times the function. So 2 by 1 and y is 0 plus 1 squared into e to the power 1. So if you solve this, you will find a value. Let's say alpha. That is your k1 value. So when you go to the second step, here k2. 
So again, h is 0 0.02. But now in the function, they are asking you to substitute x plus half of h. So what is x? That is 0 0.1. So if you add half of h, now x is 1.01, right? 1.01. Here y, so in terms of y, they are asking you to substitute y plus half of k1. So I, I have taken k1 as alpha. So initial y is zero. So half of alpha should be added. So now the value is alpha by two. Here plus 1.01 squared into e to the power 1.01. .01. So this is your k2 value. So once you find k2, similarly, you have to find k3 and k4. After finding all these k1, k2, k3, and k4, there's another equation. So y is equal to one over six into k1 plus two k2 plus two k3 plus k4. You have to substitute in that and find the answer. That's all. RK method is not big deal. There's RK2 and RK4. Right, anything else? So I'll just only wait for another more minutes and I'll end the meeting. If anybody want to ask anything, you can ask. So, and as a reminder, I'll leave a feedback form and uh, uh, you all can uh, reply it. Please reply to that and uh, you can find this in my channel. I'll upload it, uh, I'll try to upload it uh, uh, by tomorrow. Uh, since it is around two and a half hours to three hours video, it takes a large time to upload. I'll try to upload it uh, as soon as possible before Definitely before 12th. Anyone else? Any questions? Uh, yeah, I'll leave a link. Just uh, give me a second. Check whether the link is working. So you can find the previous uh, discussion also. I have already uploaded that one. And you can find some other videos also. Yeah, okay, fine, the link is working. So another reminder, when you are filling the Google Forms, uh, please uh, fill with the correct email ID uh, because some of the mails were not delivered and uh, 
the reason is the mail ids are wrong so i have no other means to contact you all so please when you are filling and uh, be careful with the mail address and convey the message to your friends so i'll be here around for another for 3 minutes if anyone have any issues you can ask you can speak up you can unmute and speak up and if there are any no any doubts you can uh, leave you are free to leave in egan question how to say that egan vectors are mutually uh i'm oh, sorry uh so to check whether they are mutually orthogonal you have to take three matrices right let's say you give, give me a second i'll take the white board right so here let's say you have three matrices let's say a b c here this is p q r right and this is um uh, x y z right so these three other matrices first you have to take i'll name this as 1 2 3 1 first you have to find the dot product of 1 and 2 so a into p b into q c into r and add all these three if they are zero uh you have to first check that one then you have to multiply 2 and 3 you have to again they should be zero then 3 and 1 again this should be zero if all these three conditions are satisfied then they are orthogonal that is the concept uh who asked that question mr dev is it clear now yeah okay right uh, it's 2 it's 940 then closing it okay right uh, all the very best for the exam do well uh, so let's meet up soon in near future so i have a question at last minute uh, which year is this one find a change of variables that reduce to a sum of squares and express in terms of new variables and so is this the scheme or uh, is this the question i can't figure it out uh, is this new syllabus one if i am right yeah this is new syllabus right and this is a question right i think uh, you have to prove that uh, x comma y oh it's the marking uh the change find a change of variable that reduce to a sum of squares and express 
in terms of new variables they are assuming the change of variables are given by okay then so what is p so p is this one so they are multiplying so 1 into x1 minus where did this phi come from hmm is this the modulus yeah five is the modulus so they have divided by, by five also then they have again multiplied it by so i don't get it uh, i don't get it how this part has come here right x comma y a into y comma actually this is uh, a matrix into a into transpose of that same matrix right question one part b second one uh, so this one there is some sort of idea but still so we usually multiply the rows by the columns but still I don't get it how this 5 came in and uh, how this there is a minus part don't get that one when they are calculating that p into x1 by y1 then all of a sudden ah they have taken the inverse okay 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 right okay so they have taken the p inverse and they have taken this right this is okay so they just they have multiplied both side by p inverse and taken x i and y x1 and y1 as a subject and they have found this matrix that is okay so we know a um, uh, the a matrix right so they have given a matrix as 1 2 2 and minus 1 so here you have to just do a multiplication right so using a 1 2 2 minus 2 that is a and x comma y that is in the column format you can multiply those two and after taking the answer you have to multiply that one by the row matrix x comma y the first one you have to do something like that right can you see the uh, right. can you see this one now can you see the photo i mean shehani can you see this Please reply. Yeah, okay. So here, here, if you notice this, after this part, they have multiplied both side by P inverse, by P inverse, both side, and taken this as subject and found this one. Okay, here, you know A, we know A, it is given, and with A, first multiply this matrix. A and this matrix then you will find another column matrix like uh, a and b something like this and you know x comma y right that is the row matrix this one and if you multiply these two you will come to this one right so i am winding up okay 